something brand new here at Tone and Grooves, an episode completely devoted to 78 RPM records and some very cool finds that I've picked up. Welcome to the very first episode of The Shellac Stacks. That's coming up next. Hello vinyl community, music lovers, and anyone else who just happened to stumble upon this video and hopefully welcome to 78 RPM collectors and early jazz, big band, you name it, enthusiasts. So um, this is the first episode of which uh, hopefully will be a continuing running series, it'd be fantastic. Um, I think I'll call it the uh, Shellac Stacks. Shellac Stacks. So um, episodes dedicated specifically to um, 78 RPM records, which are, of course, made out of shellac and not vinyl. So that's the idea behind the title. And stacks. I literally have stacks of them. And this is a stack that was given to me completely for free. Uh, mentioned in an earlier video, um, the older couple at church that, um, you know, came, approached me, said, you know, we've got a, tons of records at our house. You should get some... Ugh, excuse me. Can't even talk. It's early in the morning. Maybe I should have some more coffee. Let me have some more coffee. Skull! <sighs> okay. Um, yes, invited me over to their house. Said, you know, we have tons of records. You should come visit with us. And you can have whatever you want. So as I said in that video, um, what was really interesting was they had records that had belonged to their parents. So a bunch of, you know, stacks of 78 RPM records. And then they had records that belonged to them, and then rec some records that had belonged to their kids. And so the freebies that I got out of that trip were, you know, everything from, um, I think probably the earliest I have in here is a 1919 uh, Vic uh, Victor record all the way up to, I mean, I got, you know, some U2 and whatnot that I showed in another video. This is just the 78, so that's what we're going to go through today. Um, fantastic. Shellac stacks. Let's dive in to the stacks. So first up, we've got, was very excited to find this and was actually learned some very cool information about this um, after the fact. Um, this is Johnny Ray. It's a Johnny Ray um, box set, um, simply entitled Johnny Ray. Um, you flip this open and then you've got, you know, the information there on the inside of the box lid and then all of these Columbia Records are in this little, you know, flip folder thing here, which I'm not going to go through because you can easily damage your records and break off um, chips off of the, the you know the edges of the records if you're not careful with those flip folders there they can get caught and then you can snap off um, the edge of this of the record so I'm not going to go through there um, but anyway you've got songs on here like and I'm gonna need the glasses for this ay 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 getting old really kind of is not so fun sometimes so you've got Don't Blame Me, Walking My Baby Back Home, Don't Take Your Love For Me, All Of Me, Give Me Time, The Lady Drinks Champagne, Out In The Cold Again, and then the last song is Coffee and Cigarettes. Um, what I discovered about this, which is really kind of cool, was that um, online, apparently, according to what my research found on this, um, people were saying that this is actually the very first um, self-titled, if you will, um, album. So this was the very, because it's just Johnny Ray. There's no, there's no title. Um, so this apparently is the very first self-titled album ever released, which is interesting. It was available um, in this format as well as a box, little box set of um, 45 RPM um, records, uh, seven inches, and then it was released as a 10 inch single as well on Columbia. So very interesting. I love Johnny Ray. I mean, Johnny Ray is kind of a, I wouldn't call him a crooner. I mean, he's almost, um, I mean, kind of a crooner. I mean, you know, some of his albums that I have are, are kind of jazzy. Um, 
you know, but he's different from Frank Sinatra. He's got a little more, I would say, a little more blues, almost like early rock and roll kind of style. Um, so, you know, Johnny Ray is a super cool, and I was excited to pick this set up um, for free. Um, also picked up one that I've been, you know, have been keeping my eye out for, and, you know, I've had some of the individual records from this set. Um, that I have found at you know thrift stores, junk shops, and whatnot, and have been in my collection, but I, uh, up until now, have not had the complete album. So I was super excited to get this and get it for free. I mean, that's just amazing. This is Bing Crosby, Merry Christmas. So you've got Bing Crosby um, with the Andrews Sisters on a number of these. Um, so you've got Silent Night, um, Odessa, Odessa Fidelis, White Christmas. God rest you, merry gentlemen. I'll be home for Christmas. Faith of our fathers, and then with the Andrews sisters, you've got Jingle Bells, Santa Claus is coming to town, and um, oh, that's it. Jingle Bells and Santa Claus is coming to town. So, and you know, it's just here's the inside. You got the this is on Decca, and what I love here is you got this whoop, little note here that says um, from Dad for Christmas, 1948. So, just super cool. Again, I'm not going to flip through there because I do not want to damage um, those records. So, I was excited to pick that up, especially for free. Um, in here, we've got, this was another album I picked up. This is a homemade album, so you've got, you know, um, just one of the standard 78 um, flip folders. And then they've put on here and like, uh, with kind of, what, adhesive letters Gene Autry um, so in here you've got and again must have been a gift super cool here I don't know if this will come out on the camera um, right here you've got it says it says the gang 1948 so it must have been um, a, a gift at one point given to someone from the gang I'm assuming in 1948 so super cool. Oh, and it's all Gene Autry records. So you've got um, Cowboy Blues, uh, backed with Galavantin, Galavantin, Galveston Gal. You've got Ages and Ages Ago with You Laughed and I Cried. You've got Sail Along Silvery Moon with There's a Gold Mine in the Sky. It Makes No Difference Now with you are my sunshine and these are all in just fantastic condition they're just in beautiful condition um, so super excited to pick up some Gene Autry I mean just a little mini collection there four albums and for free all in beautiful conditions fantastic love that early country music um, let's see here the rest of these were um, individuals that you know I picked up at this couple's house um, picked up, actually picked up another one of those albums, you know, the homemade album type, um, filled with a bunch of stuff, um, some of which I decided to keep for the collection, some of which I don't think I will, because there was some stuff in there like, um, oh, um, what, what was the, you know, like, um, Sammy Kay and what, some of the big band guys that I don't, aren't really my favorites, so I may just let those pass, um, but these are the ones I decided to definitely keep and have already cleaned up and put into um, new sleeves. Excited to find this. I don't think I've ever found um, any of his records in the wild before. So this was super cool to pick up. Um, this is Cab Calloway. And some of you're not gonna be able to see these. Um, this is Cab Calloway and his orchestra. You got You Rascal You. And it's great. The, the, <laughs> the whole title is actually I'll Be Glad When You're Dead you rascal you. So, I mean, it's it's a great song. Um, and that's backed with Some of These Days. So, this is on the Brunswick label. It's actually a reissue. It's the Brunswick Collector series. So the songs are actually from, um, it actually says on here, this is actually from a box, from a from an album. So this is one record from um, a multi-record Cab Calloway album. So unfortunately, they didn't have the whole thing. I just got the one record, but you know, whatever. Um, so this song, let's see, You Rascal You is actually from 1931, and um, Some of These Days is from 1930. So, super cool to find that. For free? <laughs> yeah. 
Cab Calloway record for free? Yeah, I'll take that. Um, here we got on Capitol. This is Mel Blanc and the Sportsmen, um, backed by Billy May's orchestra. I dig Billy May. There we go, a little light on there. So it's a uh, Capitol um, from 1949. Um, I'm just wild about animal crackers. I love that song. I discovered um, I'm just wild about animal crackers. Um, I have that on an Irving Aronson and his Commanders record um, from probably the 20s, from the you know mid late 20s. Um, I'm just wild about Animal Crackers. It's a it's a funny song. And then the back, the flip side on that is Big Bear Lake. So Mel Blanc on Capitol from 1949. A little more early country. You've got Tex Ritter from 1948. This is on Capitol on a Red Capitol label. Um, Deck of Cards and Rounded Up in Glory. Tex Ritter. Super excited. Oh my gosh, this was so fun to find. This one actually wasn't quick on the uptake on this one. Um, I just saw that it was a Columbia flag label, um, which are, um, I don't see those very often. Very rarely find um, Columbia flags um, in the wild. And so I was excited to find it. I looked at this side first and saw that it's the Columbia Symphony Orchestra with a, a Schubert Serenade. Um, so I was a little disappointed at first, flipped it over and saw, oh my gosh, it's got Ted Lewis. So you got Ted Lewis, um, it says here, Ted Lewis popular favorites, a medley foxtrot, and then I re only after that, actually looking a little closer, I realized it's a sample record. So you got it there, says sample record, 25 cents, and this is, um, catalog number 1S. So this is the first sample record on this type of label from 1923. Um, so super excited to find that. Um, these were, you know, sample records that were made available um, just 25 cents um, as a way to, you know, try to get people hooked, basically, you know. So um, super excited. Unfortunately, I did not have the original sleeve. Um, I did a little research, read a little bit on this. You know, it would have come in the, obviously, in an original sleeve and the sleeve would have had all kinds of like advertisement and you know about Columbia, um, you know, phonographs and whatnot, and trying to entice people into buying, you know, Columbia phonographs and um, Columbia records and whatnot. And so that would have been a really cool like advertising piece. Would have been awesome to find this in the original sleeve. But hey, I'll take the record. Love Ted Lewis's jazz band. Very cool. So from 1923, that sample record. Very cool pickup especially for free. Um, oh, fantastic, one of my favorites. We got Benny Goodman and his orchestra is on Columbia, Red Columbia. Um, you know, people, this is just not turning out. So, um, people make fun of the early, of the Red Columbias, like, you know, there's not much good on, on Red Columbias. That's just not true. Um, you got Benny Goodman and his orchestra. Granted, this is not the early Benny Goodman. I mean, this is 1941. Um, but there's some really cool, um, some great music on Red Label Columbia's, in my opinion, anyway. Um, this is Smoke Gets In Your Eyes and La Rosita. Um, let's see here. Smoke Gets In Your Eyes is actually one of my favorite songs. I just dig that song. It's very cool. Uh, you got Helen Forrest. Helen Forrest is, on, is, is the vocalist on that. Just cannot seem to get the camera to pick that up. Anyway. So, little Benny Goodman from 1941. Also got, uh, here's, here's another Red Columbia. This is Harry James. Harry James and his orchestra from 1942. Um, I heard you cried last night. And then an instrumental called James Session, which is a super cool, just kind of um, totally instrumental big band piece. Um, you've got I Heard You Cried Last Night. Um, Helen Forrest is also on that. That's interesting. Huh. I just caught that. So we got Helen Forrest with Benny Goodman. Did I get that right? Let me make sure I got that right. Yep, Helen Forrest. So you got Helen Forrest with um, Benny Goodman and Helen Forrest with Harry James and his orchestra. So that's super cool. For free again. I mean, this is just like the extra bonus that this is all free records. Got a couple Frank Sinatra, also Red Columbia's. So again, you know, there's some good stuff on Red Columbia's. Uh, this is from 1942. You got Oh What a Beautiful Morning and People Will Say We're in Love. So, yep, Frank Sinatra doesn't name the orchestra, so just uh, Frank Sinatra on a Red Label Columbia from 1942. 
Uh, here's one from 1944. You got um, if 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 you are but a dream and White Christmas, also on a red label Columbia um, from 1944. Frank Sinatra, dig Frank Sinatra, good stuff. Uh, a little more early country. We got uh, Gene Autry on a red label Columbia as well from 1950. This is the Funny Little Bunny and <laughs> Peter Cottontail. <laughs> so uh, that's fun. Gene Autry on Red Label Columbia. Uh, a little more big band here. We got Jimmy Dorsey and his orchestra. We got Kitty Kalen on vocals. This is on Decca from 1943. Uh, this is, uh, they're either too young or too old, um, backed with Star Eyes. So that's a uh, Decca from 1943. Jimmy Dorsey and his orchestra. This was interesting pickup. Um, I love Bing Crosby and was excited to find this. This is um, the Crosby family, basically. So you got Gary, Philip, Dennis, Lindsay, and Bing Crosby. And it's called A Crosby Christmas, part one and part two. It's on this interesting DECA label, which I think I've only seen once before I have another um, which I th it's actually Bing Crosby and somebody else, um, Bob Hope, I think, on a DECA label like that. Um, it says on here, DECA light, unbreakable under normal use. <laughs> under normal use, but it's definitely not unbreakable. But anyway, so it's a Crosby Christmas, so it's got that Christmas feeling. I'd like to hitch a ride with Santa Claus. And then part two, you got uh, the snowman that Christmas feeling and I'd like to hitch a ride with Santa Claus again. So I have not listened to this yet, but I'm sure this is going to be interesting. I dig Big Cr Bing Crosby, so that was a very cool pickup, especially for free. <laughs> uh, let's see here, more early country. So we got Gene Autry again. This is on the OK label. Just not showing up. Anyway, um, OK from 1941, be honest with me. What's going to happen to me? So Gene Autry, and another Johnny Ray. This was super cool because as I was um, investigating the album there, I found out that his first um, single, or at least first hit single, was this one here. Uh, so you got on the OK label, you got Johnny Ray Cry, and then Johnny Ray The Little White Cloud That Cried um, on OK. This is from 1951. And you got Johnny Ray with the four lads, accompanied by orchestra. Cry, and the little white cloud that cried. <laughs> so, very cool Johnny Ray pickup there as well. Did I say what year that was from? I don't remember if I said it or not. 1951, yeah. Okay, super excited um, to get this. Um, this is because I just love this guy. This is Billy Murray. This is on Victor from 1919. This is Victor number 18515. So you got Billy Murray. Um, the worst is yet to come. And then on the flip side, you've got Can You Tame Wild Women? <laughs> Can You Tame Wild Women? This is great. I, I clean this up, listen to it. Um, the Worst Is Yet To Come is a World War One, you know, song. It's, um, the song is all really kind of literally, like, dedicated to the Kaiser and talking about how, you know, um, the, basically, you know, the Kaiser, the, the worst is yet to come for the Kaiser because he's going to lose the war and whatnot. So it's a kind of a, you know, patriotic kind of rally the troops kind of a thing. Um, the worst is yet to come for the Kaiser of Germany um, during World War One, And then on the back you got, Can You Tame Wild Women? Women, W-I-M-M-E-N. <laughs> Super cool. Um, funny comedic song. Um, the guy has gone to, to the circus and, you know, he's just impressed with the lion tamer. You know, the, the guys, you know, they've tamed the lions and the bears and whatnot. Um, can you tame, but, but can you tame wild women? And if you can, would you please tame my wife? <laughs> so, just a great comedic song. Billy Murray from 1919. Um, 
Can You Tame Wild Women on, on Victor. So, that's super cool. It's called a Batwing label, by the way. I don't know, you know, if you... This kind of uh, shape up here, this... That logo or whatever, that graphic, is called a, it's called a Batwing. So, just a little something there. A little FYI, you know. Um, Victor Batwing label. So, those are from the teens and into the very early 20s. Um, last, but certainly not least, another one of my favorite songs. This is on Victor from 1942. This is Dinah Shore. Um, You'd be so nice to come home to. You'd be so nice to come home to. I discov first discovered that song via Julie London. Um, Julie London is a fantastic version of that song. Um, which is very kind of, you know, um, it's, it's jazzy, it's very, it's kind of uh, nightclubbish. I mean, it's like, you know, piano bar kind of a style, you know. You'd be so nice to come home to. It's, it's an awesome song. Um, this is Dinah Shore doing You'd Be So Nice to Come Home To from 1942. Um, her version is not jazzy like, <laughs> like the Julie London version, but I love that song. Um, so I think it'll be a keeper for the collection. And the B side of that is Manhattan Serenade. Manhattan Serenade. There we go. A little light on that label. So um, you'd be so nice to come home to. And Manhattan Serenade on Victor Dinah Shore from 1942. So that is the Shellac Stack episode number one. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'm hoping to do some more of these Shellac Stack episodes because I do, as I said, literally have stacks of shellac um, that I would be super excited to share um, with you all. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Drop some comments. Man, especially in this episode with, you know, with 78s, um, the early music, would love to interact with some of you 78 collectors or those of you who just love this early music from the teens, 20s, 30s, 40s. Um, we'd love, love to chat, so drop a comment or two. That'd be fantastic. Again, thanks for watching and subscribing, and until next time, stay in the groove.